Uh, why create a revocable living trust? Well, of course, it avoids, it avoids probate. It prevents the court from controlling things. It makes the distribution of assets much more efficient. Uh, it allows you to kind of control the distributions and the timing of, of uh, when beneficiaries receive their assets. It motivates people to finish things before they get their money. It puts the right people in charge without any legal procedure at all. It's private, very difficult to contest, and I can tell you in creating over 25,000 trusts in our firm, we've never had one single trust uh, overturned. Uh, protects people with uh, special needs, lots of advantages, prevents uh, unintentionally disinheriting uh, individuals, that, which sometimes happen with joint tenancy. It's relatively inexpensive and easy to set up. And in just a moment, we'll actually talk about the prices and, and um, what, we, what we do to set these up. You can change or cancel your living trust at any time. It's a revocable, amendable, changeable trust. Most people may never make a change. Some people make a change every three or four or five years if something happens that you didn't plan on. Uh, it really keeps peace in the family. There's nothing better to keep peace than creating clarity and, and a structure. Eases the burden on the family. Family doesn't have to go through the process. And I think the number one benefit from creating estate planning is, is peace of mind. And we all know that when you're more peaceful, you're going to live longer, you have less stress. So actually, by creating a living trust, you're going to live longer. See? <laughs> OK. When you compare a will with the trust, again, this is just kind of a summary chart. You can see that we, we basically are going to eliminate the probate. That's the idea. Just eliminate the entire court from your from managing your estate. And, and sometimes I get the question, why are living trusts popular now? And, and why do people do wills? And, and that's a very easy answer because remember the day before computers? I do. Before computers, when you wanted to create a long document, what did you have to do? Type it with a typewriter or handwrite it. Documents took a long time to create, and trusts are very substantial, thick documents. So if you were John D. Rockefeller or someone that had a lot of money pre-computer and you wanted to create a 60-page trust and you've got to pay your lawyer by the hour to type this, or he's, you know, he's going to have an assistant maybe type some of it, but trusts were extremely expensive pre-computer. When computers came out, and we could then use, used to be Word Perfect before there was Microsoft Word, suddenly we could use the computer to help us create a very lengthy, complex, comprehensive document, and we didn't have to retype the whole thing every single time. Now, we, we tailor and, and we, we make it unique, but it's when computers happen that we were able to create this much documentation at a, at a much more affordable price. And suddenly everyone could have a trust. So it's really no secret. Technology has allowed us to do what wealthy families have been doing um, for, for decades. How do you create a living trust? Well, the process is pretty simple. Um, there are some different options. You probably heard of, of uh, LegalZoom, uh, some of these online products. I can't recommend those because they're very, very problematic. Usually people end up with the wrong type of trust, or they get the trust, but they don't get the will and the powers of attorney. They don't get the health care directive, or they get the trust, but they don't put the home into the trust. I have never seen a properly done, fully funded living trust off of any computer program. So you have to be careful with that. One size doesn't fit all. Every family is different. Your family is different from your neighbor's family. And then the sad part is a lot of people that go online and do these fill-in-the-blank forms don't realize that it's not finished until 
until it's too late, and then it doesn't work. Uh, a lot of these forms don't, don't keep up with the current laws and the changes in laws. We have federal, county, and state laws that are constantly changing. And so that's problematic. Usually these types of plans have to be redone. Some folks have actually gone to a general practice attorney to get their living trust done. Well, that would be like me going to the foot doctor for brain surgery. <laughs> Every attorney is a specialist in a different area. All we do is estate planning. That's all our firm does because it's complex enough. If it's a criminal law problem, we use a criminal attorney. So I wouldn't recommend going to a general practice attorney to get your living trust done. And I've seen a lot of problems. A lot of businessmen and women have corporate counsel in their company. It might even be in-house counsel. You, if you have a company, you might have your own lawyer already. Sadly, those, those lawyers, as great as they may be, may not be experts at, at estate planning. And I see a lot of trusts that were done by the in-house company attorney and nothing was in the trust. Even the stock of the company for which the attorney worked wasn't transferred in and I still had to do the probate. So. Generally, doctors are kind of like lawyers. Everybody knows something about their own thing. And if they know, if they tell you they know everything about everything, probably not a good idea. Um, a lot of general practice attorneys will just have you fill out forms. Uh, they have bare standard forms that may not be current. And oftentimes, they don't have the requisite knowledge and, and experience. So we don't recommend you, you use um, anyone other than an estate planning attorney. Uh, they're licensed, specially trained, and for example, with our firm, we have uh, quite a bit of experience and, and a, great, a great team that puts these customized plans together. Uh, we see all the problems, whatever kind of problem can happen, we've probably seen it more than once. And that allows us to avoid those kinds of problems for you. We like to have a long-term relationship with our clients because we hope you'll live a long time and we want to be here if you want to make a change. So, you know, I get a phone call from someone, look, I'm going on vacation, I'm going to the airport, can you meet me at Terminal B to sign my amendment before I get on the plane? <laughs> I actually had a client a few weeks ago. They're, they're very, very wealthy people. And I was down at the Bradley Terminal when they pulled up in the Rolls Royce and jumped out. And uh, I had cordoned off this security area where I'm a notary, a notary public too. So I was able to stamp their documents as they got onto the plane. And fortunately, I don't have to do that very often. But we like to be here if you want to make changes to your trust, even a simple change. And later on. If something happens to you, we want to be here for your family. We want to be here for your spouse or your children or the successor trustee, whoever needs help. Um, we'll update your documents. If the law changes, we'll let you know and we'll notify you of a change in the law. And anytime you want to come in for a checkup, have us look at your documents, make sure you still have your documents, make sure you still know and love all the people named in there, you can come in any time and talk with us about that too. We love to talk to our clients. We're the people you can talk about that will not judge you <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. Uh, setting up your estate plan. Here's the process. It's fairly quick and easy. Uh, you can, if you turn in your uh, information sheet and uh, you can set up an appointment at any time while I'm speaking or during the seminar, you can go to the back and talk to Lori and set up an appointment to come into this branch or any West Comp branch. And we or a representative of our law firm or Affinity Trust, who is a paralegal firm that can meet with you and gather the information, you can come into the, the West Comp branch and meet with them personally. And uh, we go through the, all the information, ask you questions of our own, we answer your questions. This can be uh, a very detailed private consultation. Once we have the information, 
then the law firm, it'll be me or another attorney at Citadel, will actually prepare the documents. If we haven't met with you personally, then we will at least, at a minimum, talk to you over the phone as often as you want. doesn't have to be uh, one consultation. We want to make sure that all your questions are answered. And by the way, it doesn't have to be a phone consultation. You want to come into the law office, that's just fine. A lot of people just like to do it by phone so they don't have to get on the, the road and they don't have to drive anywhere. Once we've verified, met with you or spoken with you, verified that all the information that was gathered is correct, we then prepare the documents and uh, then they'll be delivered back to you. Uh, you'll come back into the Westcom branch and review and sign your documents. There will be two sets. You'll get the nice binder and then we'll get a second backup set. So if you ever lose your book, do you ever lose important documents? <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people lose their whole trust binder because they've hidden it so well they can't remember where they put it. <laughs> But don't worry, I will have a set if you can't find yours. Um, and yes, we're here to assist you in funding and putting things and accounts and properties into your trust. The whole process takes a few weeks. Unless you're going on a vacation and you need it done by Saturday, then we can do it. We have rush mode that we can get into. And you know, in this business, sometimes the phone call comes from a hospital or there's been an emergency and we don't have to report.